judgment is still on you. Hello, this is Lauren Schoenberg, Senior Scholar at the National Jazz Museum in Harlem, and it's my great pleasure to present the third annual Benny Carter Ed Berger Concert. These two gentlemen were linked for several decades as personal friends and as professional collaborators and really relied on one another. And we'll get into that in great detail in the panel discussion that follows the music. And at that discussion, you will hear from Mrs. Benny Carter, Hilma Carter, Ed Berger's brother, Ken Berger, who also played a role, of course, in the whole, in the whole thing, uh, as did two very close friends of Ed's and Benny's from the Institute of Jazz Studies at Rutgers, the former director, Dan Morgenstern, who was there for several decades, and Vincent Pelote, also there for several decades, uh, who's still working there and has always had uh, one of the most senior positions at the Institute. Warren Vache also participates in the panel, as do I, and I had the great honor of uh, recording and, and being kind of close to Ben and Ed in various ways. So it's kind of a family affair, and I hope that you will enjoy it. The band is comprised of Warren Vache, leader, cornet, and arrangements and everything. And by the way, he was a very close musical partner of Benny's and Benny's last year's appearing on the, the Benny Carter songbook albums and toured with Benny all over the world. Kevin Oliver on the alto saxophone and Sean Mason on the piano were proud to present wonderful young musicians so steeped in the tradition and also contemporary music. If you haven't heard of them, you'll hear a lot more of them in the future, uh, but they're already well on their way. And on the bass and the drums, a very special pair who were very close to Ed and Benny. They were the rhythm team, along with pianist Chris Neville in Benny's uh, last years of performing. And that's Steve Lespina on the bass and Steve Johns on the drums. And now to the music.
And now for the panel discussion. Sitting from the left to the right, Vincent Pelote, Ken Berger, Hilma Carter, Dan Morgenstern, Warren Vache, and yours truly, Lauren Schoenberg. It was just an incredible, incredible concert, you know, when you figure that, you know, here were, you know, here was a band that just really, you know, some of them have played together, of course, over the years, but just, uh, you know, under Warren's great leadership, just kind of coalesced. I just and... eye rolled. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a really wonderful concert, you know, and when you think that it just all just came together like jazz is so spontaneously, uh, frankly, I just couldn't, you know, couldn't imagine it uh, being any better. And also, I kind of felt Benny and Ed in some kind of way, you know, how they would have been just, uh, to use the Latin term, cavelling uh, <laughs> over this wonderful, wonderful music. I think maybe why not, why not, why don't we go to Vinny and then we'll end up with the man who, who did it himself. Yeah, well, well Cavelli, you, you stole my word. <laughs> Funny you don't look it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not really, I, I thought it was fantastic. And, uh, you know, I've been listening to CDs uh, a lot since the pandemic. So it's so nice to hear live music for a change and realize how different it is to actually sit out and hear some live music. It's and played by guys like Warren Bassett mm -hmm. and. Oh God! I mean, it just Steve, John, Steve, I mean, just fantastic. And to see the youth and 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 the veterans together like that is just absolutely fantastic. And, and it just all works. All picking the same language and just fantastic stuff. So I, I got I have I got to take out of out of the whole thing. Ken, <laughs> thanks. You stole everything I was going to say. <laughs> I will second that. That it's uh, really delightful and refreshing to hear music live and uh, so that's always a treat during these times but also delightful to see young musicians and older musicians playing together in this common sort of uh, form with uh, the music of Benny Carter to sort of drive it all it's truly amazing and I'm sure you know Ed and my father would have uh, you know enjoyed every second of it so yes yes it was truly a wonderful concert to have a private concert like this and to hear this new young saxophonist from Juilliard what is his name Kevin Oliver Kevin Oliver I think he's sensational and to hear Warren Vache again with his beautiful tones he and Benny were such a great pair. I think they were so similar because they had, they both had this wonderfully beautiful tone. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. Well, it was great to hear this band, which had never played together before, you know, turn into a unit and Warren, you know, a great leader and hearing the variety of Benny's tunes I mean this is just a small sampling of uh, what Benny has done uh, and you know I, I knew all these tones but to hear them uh, fresh and different and the two young guys you know I mean it's great to see the you know, the story is continuing. Mm -hmm. And to hear two very young musicians who are not off into some, you know, uh, space theory, but, you know, uh, they know the fundamentals and they, they can play. And so that was beautiful. I think Benny would have really enjoyed it. I really enjoy playing music, Benny's music, because there's so much of Benny in it. I can almost hear him talking to me when I when I when I play those tunes. So much of him in it. He was such a nice, kind, gentle human being, and smart. As I said earlier, every one of his songs is deceptively simple. But for if you're a musician and you're trying to improvise over them, there's a sand trap in all of them. <laughs> and you're going to end up in it if you're not paying attention. He was just a smart, smart man. 
And the kids are the thrill. The kids are the thrill. It used to be a time, believe it or not, when I was a kid. I remember. <laughs> when I, I, I first the heard you. The time I heard you was at a place called the Red Garter, oh where God. Red Ballot Man had these Sunday things, mm -hmm. and you were a protege of the great Pee Wee Irwin. Yep. And he brought you out, and I think you were about 15 or something. Yeah, 16, 17, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And I said to myself, I said, and I said it to other people too, you're going to hear from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> and on the trumpet, too. I <laughs> hear <laughs> from on the trumpet. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> and the cornet. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was like the sun that Benny never had. I, I, it seemed to me that they talked every day, and they always had something to talk about. And when Ed found a new musician or a, a new CD that he thought Benny should listen to, he, he got it to him. Uh, Benny continued learning about what was going on in the music business all his life. He never looked back, he always looked forward. Yeah, yeah. And, and Ed, Ed was so much a part of of helping him keeping up to date yeah. and, and of course Ed also traveled with us a lot as road manager on many Japanese tours and um, it's something in the United States and Ed would always somehow manage to get there so oh, I'll, I'll never stop missing him mm -hmm. well I had the good fortune of, uh, you know, working very closely with mm -hmm. Ed and Vinny. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was remarkable to see this relationship with Ed and, and Benny mm -hmm. uh, grow and turn into a real kind of partnership. Yes. And uh, it was like a, a father and son. Mm -hmm. And there it's interesting that it was Ed's father, who first brought Benny Carter into the Berger orbit. Yes. Because, uh, and he was a remarkable man, Moro yes. Berger. Uh, and he's, he kind of discovered Benny and uh, really, you know, wanted to do something mm -hmm. with him. I mean, that was a wonderful relationship, sort of surreal. I mean, it started when I was like a teenager, and just to be in the presence of Benny Carter, you know, uh, a figure that I only known from album covers, really, and, uh, you know, the records in them, um, to sit around the living room and chat with him, it was just a, just a, a really uh, uh, a mystical, almost, experience. Mm. Um, that we had such close ties and access to him. Yeah. Um, and over the years, it was great. I mean, Ed was extremely shy, generally, as a person, and takes a long time to warm up to somebody. And so the fact that, you know, he ended up with such a close Frank and, and you know, uh, warm relationship with, you know, a uh, world-renowned figure is, is both astonishing and, and uh, you know, yeah. very satisfying. So, yeah. I, I remember I, when, when Benny asked Ed to be the road manager for the Japanese mm -hmm. tour, uh, Ed said to me, road manager? <laughs> what am I going to do? And I said, it'll be all right. You know, Benny wouldn't have asked you if he didn't think that you could handle it. And as it turned out, it did. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, with the Japanese tour. I remember uh, so many times being at record sessions, uh, and, you know, now it is at record dates, and everybody's hovering around, and everyone has an opinion, and all this kind of stuff. The only one that Benny would turn to, uh, many sessions I saw, was Ed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there'd be all these chefs, so to speak, sure. mm -hmm. and he'd go to, and he'd confer with Ed, 
and then he would go and then he would decide whether to do a second take or something like this. Well, Warren, you, you, you uh, traveled with Ben, you toured. Yeah, that is. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? And, and, <laughs> it, it, it was such fun to be with Ed. Anything hanging from, from the ceiling <laughs> seemed to hit his head <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> and we would so laugh at him every time he somehow uh, got yeah. crashed. <laughs> Did you go to Thailand? I went to Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. It was quite a unique experience. We had dinner with the king. Yes. Uh -huh. We had dinner with the king. Mm -hmm. You were there. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> you said something, Lauren, about uh, Benny only looking or trusting Ed's opinion. You know, there's a re the reason for that because Ed, Ed was a straight shooter, and and not only was he a straight shooter, he he was also very good at recognizing phonies. If you were phony, Ed Ed, Ed, Ed saw it immediately, and Benny was for real. So that's one reason why he oh, and, yeah. and Benny were were, were tight. I'm sure Benny also could recognize phonies when he saw them too. And and I mean, Ed was a straight shooter. He would give you the, the the real poop. He did a lot of my editing when I wrote stuff, and he would he was he was un, <laughs> he was unrelenting. I mean, he he would go right at you and that tell you what's wrong, which was great. I mean, because I that's what I wanted. And every time I complained, he would say, "Well, if you didn't want my opinion, why'd you ask?" I mean, you know, so, and I'm sure it was the same way with Benny with the music. I mean, you know, he was he's going to tell Benny what he thought, and that was great, and that that was it. And I and I kind of missed that. <laughs> yeah. With Benny Carter, you know, when you were playing his music, I remember a quote from Dickie Wells or someone like that. We'll play with Benny way back in the '30s, and he said, you know, like when you played Benny's music, it kind of played itself, and that reminded me of what Warren said about the sand trap because. He playing in a big band and playing his arrangements, he played the trombone, he played the trumpet, and he played the saxophone. So when he wrote those parts, he wrote them because he knew how the instruments played. But it was such a, a relaxed atmosphere. And uh, it was such a, a magical, magical thing. And I think we're all blessed just to have been in the aura of someone like that. And I'll mention also, I think all of us, you know, wound up at your home and Benny's home uh, out in California. And that was such a such an unforgettable, warm thing. I mean, just like what Benny said, I'd be sitting there talking with you and talking with Benny, and say, am I really here? <laughs> like, like hanging out with these people? Yeah, that's like, I, I can't believe that's it. Yeah. They were just wonderful, yeah, wonderful, yeah, wonderful yeah. magic. Thank, Thank you all very much. This has been wonderful, yeah. and we will reunite next year okay. for the next one. Yes, indeed. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all for watching. Thank you so much for joining us for the third annual Benny Carter Ed Berger concert. We are already planning the fourth one for 2022, and we hope that not only will you enjoy watching this as many times as you'd like, because now that it's up being shared, uh, but also the many, many other educational programs and concerts and all kinds of things that the National Jazz Museum shares on its YouTube channel. Also, be sure to check our Facebook page and everything else. On behalf of our executive director, Tracy Hyder Suffern, and everyone else at the museum, thank you so much for joining us. My mind is still on you.